In this video, I'm going to guide you through the steps to create a new application template. To begin, open Settings from the menu bar, then click on SAM Settings. Under Application Monitor Templates, click Create a New Template. I'm going to create a template to monitor a custom in-house application. Click on Add Component Monitors to view a list of the component monitors available. When you go to create your first template, you'll first need to know what from that application is important to monitor and how you can get at that information. For example, does this application have a database that you could pull data from? If it runs on a Unix system, can you run a script to poll information? If it runs on Windows, are there services you can monitor? What about event logs? Are there specific ports that need to remain open for this application to function properly? Server and Application Monitor offers almost 50 different component types, each with a different monitoring function that you can use together to get the data you need to monitor your applications. The trick is to determine which components match your requirements. To create your template, use the checkbox and select each component monitor you'd like to add. You can add as many components as you like to a template, and you can adjust the quantity field by clicking on it to add multiples of a component type. For instance, this could be used to monitor more than one TCP port or more than one service for your application. For this custom application template, I'm going to add a Windows Event Log Monitor to check the Windows Event Log for the application's Backup Complete event. To check if the application web portal is available for users to log into, I'm going to use an HTTP form login monitor. I'm going to add a second Windows Event Log Monitor to check for critical and warning events generated by the application. And finally, the application runs using two services, so I'm going to add two services monitors to cover them. Now that I've got them selected, I'm going to click Add and start configuring them. My first Windows Event Log Monitor is going to check to see if the Backup Complete message has been logged to the Windows Event Log each day. I'm going to set the credential for monitoring to Inherit from the Node. That way, when I apply this template to my servers, I won't need to manually set the credentials on each of them. You have the option here to poll via WMI or via RPC. For this example, I'm going to stick with WMI. The message I'm looking for will be logged to the Windows application event log, so I'll leave that set to default as well. I'm now going to set the match definition to custom so that we can define our criteria. The message we're looking for is an information level message that states backup completed successfully once a day. We want this monitor to show down if it wasn't logged. I'm going to set the event type to information. To match this specific event, I'll enter the keywords I'm looking for between quotes to define them as a single string. Now I need to define how many event logs we're going to check. We need this to fail if it's not seen every 24 hours, and by default, this template will poll every five minutes. There's 288 five-minute intervals in 24 hours, but we want to leave some leeway in case the backup takes longer than usual. So I'll set this to 300 to give it an extra hour to complete the backup. Finally, we need to change the component to show down only if the event is not found. I'm going to set if a match is found in a polling period, component status is to up. My second Windows event log monitor will be very similar. Again, we'll need to inherit credentials and poll via WMI as before. This time, my match definition will change to looking for error or warning event types. At the top here, I'm going to define the log source to match the application source name seen in the event logs because I don't want warning or error messages from other applications on this server causing this component to fail. This time I want the component to fail if we do see event messages of this type, so I'll leave this set to the default of down. Next in the list are my service monitors. These are pretty quick to define. The trick to service monitors is to make sure you're using the net service name, not the display name for the service. You'll find the net service name when you open the services properties. I'm going to add the service name here. Again, we're going to inherit credentials for the service monitors because it will make the template really quick to apply to my servers if I have multiples of the same application in my environment. Because I'm not sure yet of the thresholds I'll need to set for this, I'm going to leave them as default and allow SAM to calculate the thresholds based on the baseline data it collects. I can always come back to adjust these again later. Service monitors themselves are all very similar to define, so to save repetition, I'll set the second service monitor to disabled for now and come back to it later. Lastly, my custom in-house application has a web portal piece that users log into. Instead of just testing that the HTTP port is available, I want to test that users can bring up the login page and successfully log into the application. 
The credential for monitoring this will vary from server to server, so I can't define a single credential that can be used for all. For now, I'll set the credential for monitoring to none. And when I go to apply this template to my servers, I'll need to manually go in and assign the correct credentials to use for that particular application instance. If you need to, you can adjust the port number if your website is hosted on a non-default port. For the URL of the website, the IP variable will be inherited from the node this template is applied to. It's not a great idea to set this to a specific variable during the template phase, as each server will have a different IP for their website. If the website IP is the same as the host IP, then the variable can be left just as it is. But if the website will be hosted with a different IP, it would be best practice to set that IP address when you apply the template against a specific node, setting the IP correctly for that node at that point. If you need to set a proxy server up for traffic to these servers, you can do so by enabling Use Proxy and by defining the proxy IP here. Whether or not you'll want to define the proxy at the template level or at the application level will be dependent on your environment setup. The key items to fill in for an HTTP form login monitor are the tags used to define the form in HTML. If they're not standard names, you may need to scan the HTML code of your application to determine what these should be set to. The login form keywords refer to the form definition tag in HTML. Common keywords are defined here by default, but if your form is named differently, you'll need to add the keyword here. For this form, I'm going to add logon as a keyword. Keywords are added between parentheses, and multiple potential keywords are separated using the vertical bar character. Login control keywords and password control keywords refer to the form tags used to define those HTML form entry text fields. Again, the commonly used keywords are defined here, but if your form uses something different, you'll need to add your own keywords here. You'll also need to define the text you expect to see on the page when the login fails and when the login succeeds. If you find your monitor starts telling you the phrase cannot be found, then it's possible that within the HTML code itself, the phrase you're testing for may have HTML code breaking it up or may be split across two lines. The SAM monitor will be testing against this returned HTML file not the displayed page, so if the phrase has been broken up, you'll need to account for that by using pattern matching regular expression. And finally, you'll need to define response time thresholds to define exactly how long you think it should take for a user to initiate a login and log in successfully. There are a lot more component monitors available to use for monitoring your applications other than the ones covered in this video. For more information on how to configure them, consult server and application monitor documentation at support.solarwinds.com.